Hello and welcome you guys. I hope y'all are having a wonderful day. So today I just wanted to update you guys on my potatoes. So these ones here are the Yukon Gold and these ones here are also Yukon Gold and then these ones on this side here are Yellow Fingerling. And they've sort of taken over, like this is absolutely insane you guys. Some of these individual canes are four feet tall. I'm still seeing no signs whatsoever of blooming. I don't know if you can see on these like upper stems here, but no signs whatsoever of blooming quite yet. I've noticed a lot of branching on the canopy of these plants and I've noticed a little bit of like windowing on the sides of the leaves. And I think this might be due to some sort of like a lacewing or like some sort of a bug of some sort. I've One thing that I've done is I've done a little bit of thinning of the crown just because there was so much growth in here I just wanted to sort of limit the amount of uh, leaf density in here so that I could basically allow for aeration between the bins and I could basically uh, help minimize instances of fungal disease so that's just why I basically got rid of the bottom most compound leaf on every single one of these stems wow just look at that canopy I mean I'm like wow <laughs> So I just wanted to show you guys, I've just been composting basically, so I just composted a bunch of the uh, individual fronds and stuff. So this here is just kind of the condition that the bottom most ones were in the compound leaves. They were going a little bit chlorotic, a little bit yellow, and that was just quite simply because there was such a large canopy that was just covering them over. So that's why I did a bit of thinning there. Um, I did a little bit of liquid feeding, and I think that these ones in the back in particular really benefited from that. I did a 10 25 10 liquid feed fertilizer. So a little bit more potassium because I did some reading and apparently potassium aids in the blooming of the plant and uh, when this when potato plants and most uh, plants in the Solanaceae family such as like eggplants and tomatoes go into bloom it sort of initiates stronger root growth and development as well. So with potatoes you really want those tubers. Those tasty tubers are what gets you your potatoes obviously so yeah now as for the more exciting part the root system of these potatoes i've noticed several more smaller potatoes on the outside i dug up another one of these canes and i noticed that the potatoes i would show you right now but i just i feel like i don't really want to sacrifice another <laughs> potato cane digging them up to show you guys but i noticed the potatoes are a little bit smaller than like a small radish in size they're about a penny in uh, diameter and I've noticed that that's just a little bit bigger than they were last week, but I still want for them to grow a little bit more meat on them. And for that reason, I have to make more generative actions. I have to reduce this canopy somewhat and enhance the soil fertility. So I'm gonna be doing something to up the acidity in the soil. I'm probably gonna put like compost tea in there and I'll see how that works. See if I get a little bit more meat on the tubers because it is late June already and I feel like at this point I'm growing a whole lot of leaf matter and I'm not growing as much of that uh, tissue of the roots that I want to see at this time in the year. Now with that being said, I actually thinned these uh, bins somewhat and I did some transplanting of some of the individual potatoes. So just strung within like my raspberries here, I just have a few potato canes and they're doing pretty well. These are quite compatible crops. If you have like a really tight-knit area, like a balcony of an apartment or something like that, it's quite possible to grow all sorts of little berries, especially raspberries with potatoes. They don't tend to compete very much, they have very different nutrient requirements, and for that reason I put them together. So I was thinking about getting a little bit of like raffia twine or something like that, just quite simply to make sure that these stems don't all flop over because they are quite significant but I haven't noticed any breaking down on the individual stems. They're quite erect, uh, they're quite turgid, and for that reason I think I'll just leave it as is because it just kind of expands the overall area of the canopy and allows for better aeration. So now where I live and with this tulip tree up here and this uh, sour gum tree over here, we have a lot of uh, aphids, we have a lot of ladybugs that naturally occur in our area so for that reason I've noticed a few ladybugs this one's really cute it doesn't have spotting on it for some reason that's just how it'd be though <laughs> so I've noticed a few of their little um, 
nymphs. So I don't know if you know what a nymph looks like, but it's in its last instar, which is basically its last developmental stage, which means that most of them are almost completely mature. So I haven't noticed any damage to the plants themselves due to the presence of these ladybugs. I think the ladybugs are actually super cute, but I'm definitely going to keep an eye on them because high populations of ladybugs usually means you have high populations of aphids and whitefly and stuff like that too. Uh, I've noticed a lot of ant activity. These are just small ants. I haven't noticed too many of them in the actual growing media itself, so it's not really concerning me there. Uh, yeah. So this is kind of a long update, I guess, on my potatoes, but I just really want to chronicle this journey for other people that want to try the potato in a bin method because I feel like it's important to kind of recognize how big they can get. I had no idea that potatoes, if you were to liquid feed them this often, would get this big. I mean, I have a jungle, y'all. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> so, um, got to keep that in mind. Another thing I've noticed is potatoes are very heavy feeders if you want to develop more branching in the root system too. I've noticed that potatoes need a lot of aeration. If you don't give these guys enough aeration and they get too big, they're a little too crowded like what I've done. I've noticed you get a lot of uh, shade exposure and what that there does is it gives you a lot of that algae I was talking about earlier and a lot of saprophytic fungus as well, which you do not want. It just kind of reduces the overall uh, splendor of the growth of the individual root hairs and then the plants themselves can't really absorb quite as many nutrients. So that's just my quick little update on my little potatoes. Wish me luck guys, I think I need it because uh, I'm not seeing the growth on the potatoes that I want to quite yet at this time of the year. They seem to be a little bit more of a late variety but I'm seeing a whole lot of top growth. I don't know if you can see over there but my grapes are actually like sort of overtaking the greenhouse too. Uh, yeah, I have these blueberries too though. I'm gonna make a video on this later, but they're doing really well. This is a type of Duke blueberry, so it's an early June, July bearing blueberry. And yeah, that's pretty much all I gotta say about this at the moment. Um, I hope y'all are staying blessed. I hope you guys are staying safe. It's kind of scary times outside. At least here it is, so just remember your safety. Remember to um, be kind, respect other people, and make this world a better place like you're already doing. Uh, yeah, have a good one folks. Thank you for watching.